Welcome back to Something in the Wilderness. My name's Steve. Each week I pick a song by Andrew McMahon from throughout his career and dive into it in hopes that we can all learn something a little more about the man and his music. So let's return back to an era we haven't explored in over a year. After Andrew felt like the Jack's Mannequin story had ended, he needed a refresh and a restart. But before he'd head out into the wilderness, he made a somewhat experimental set of songs in what would be the beginning of a whole new era. An era we may still be in today, depending on who you ask. And that's especially relevant this week, because Andrew just announced on Camp Wilderness that he's back in the studio with some producers whose names might be familiar to us here on Something in the Wilderness. Tommy English produced some of the tracks on Zombies on Broadway. James Flanagan produced some of the most well-known tracks on the self-titled Wilderness album. Makes me wonder, should we expect something in between the self-titled record and the Zombies record? Or something completely new again, like we experienced back in 2013, when Andrew decided to start from scratch again, with a brand new team and a brand new sound. Just like later this year, we're talking today about another time in Andrew's music career when we didn't really know what to expect. Though to be honest, I'm pretty sure back then most of us were expecting more of the Jack's Mannequin style, piano pop with slick guitar licks. But Andrew really threw us for a loop, pun intended, when he released a collection of songs that was primarily synthesizers, electronic loops, and auto-tuned vocals. I don't think there are many songs in the discography prior to 2013 that could be put in the same category musically as Catching Cold. This song, as well as the full EP, was released under his own name, Andrew McMahon. Now, Spotify has it categorized currently as Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness, but those of us who were around back then as fans know that he released those songs simply under his own solo name, not as a band. The song was track two on the Pop Underground EP, released on April 30th, 2013. Now, it makes sense that the songs were released under his own solo name, because this was definitely not a band coming together to record an album. It was Andrew a co-writer, and a producer who put these songs together. Andrew stated in a Camp Wilderness live stream last summer that at the time he was making this EP, it was a really beautiful time in his life where he was transitioning from one chapter into another, and that's what helped lead him out into the wilderness. He describes working with people in a way that he was just trying out different things with several new people, trying to find chemistry in songwriting. He recalls meeting Mark Williams, who was only 20 years old at the time, and someone he described as being incredibly talented. He originally perceived Mark to be so young, though, until he realized that he was even younger than Mark when he first started his own career. Mark Williams co-wrote all the songs on the EP with Andrew, but I am curious about how that partnership came about. I don't know if Mark had done some other work that Andrew was aware of that made him interested, or maybe someone else just paired them up and said, hey, Andrew, take a chance on someone you don't know that has a completely different style and see what happens. That's just my own personal theory on how this could have come about, though. Tony Hoffer produced the track and is credited with guitar work, programming, and mixing on Catching Cold. We also have some additional guitar work from Jeremy Hatcher. April 2013 was apparently a big month for Tony Hoffer, though, because in a quick online search, the most notable artist name I noticed on his producing resume was Fitz and the Tantrums. He produced their breakout album, More Than Just a Dream, which was released only two weeks after the pop underground. You may remember that album as the one included their hit songs, Out of My League and The Walker, which were huge that year. With that in mind, I truly expected to see a lot more high-profile pop artists on Hoffer's resume, considering that kind of success. But mostly he's stuck to indie artists this past decade. Some examples include The Fratellis, OK Go, and Katie Tunstall. I remember watching that live stream last summer that I referred to on Camp Wilderness, where Andrew referred to Catching Cold as, quote, a total pain in my ass. I assume because it's a pretty fast song, and he doesn't have as much experience playing it, but also, the recording is made up of multiple synthesizers and lots of programming, so I bet Andrew had to do some work to organize it and do a single piano song. Now, to even view or listen to that live stream, which was an incredible set, by the way, you do have to be a Camp Wilderness subscriber. I'll also put in another plug here that Andrew has promised some views inside of the studio on Camp Wilderness. I'm obviously not getting any kickback from Camp Wilderness, but just as a fan, the subscription has been worth it for me for what we get there. The intimate small group live streams and his answers to our questions on the message board, those have been my favorite part so far. And hey, maybe he'll post some recordings of them demoing new songs soon. And if he does, I'll mention it here first. So according to Setlist FM, Catching Cold has been played 17 times total in concert which does include that Camp Wilderness live stream. 
He most recently played it at a show on his fall 2021 tour in Cleveland, Ohio. That was the only time he's performed this song under the name Andrew McMahon in the wilderness, at least as far as Setlist FM says. The rest of the live history of the song have been Andrew McMahon's solo performances, which mostly included his solo tour in 2013. I linked one of those performances in the show notes from that tour. You'll notice if you watch the video, though, that the only analog instruments that are used in the entire performance are Andrew's piano and the drums. And that's only during the choruses, by the way. It might even be electronic drums for all I know, because I don't even know if I see a drummer. Otherwise, it's three guys playing synthesizers and possibly electronic drums, and then again, Andrew plays the piano during the chorus. I can't tell who the players are on stage, so check it out for me and let me know if you know who's in the band and if, in fact, there is a drummer there that I missed. So according to Wikipedia, when Andrew and Mark Williams were looking for inspiration in the studio for several hours one day, Andrew had a phone call from an old friend. The conversation caused him to reflect back on his days growing up in Ohio. It was then that he and Mark came up with the outline of the song. Next, Tony Hoffer added some programming and synthesizers, and then they had themselves a full fleshed out song. Andrew has said on more than one occasion that he wrote the song for his sister Katie. She was his stem cell donor when he needed a transplant during his cancer treatment. Now knowing that piece does make some of the lyrics much more clear, which we'll touch on in just a little bit. But if you're a longtime Andrew fan, you know this isn't the first song that Andrew wrote and dedicated to his sister Katie for what she did for him that time. I also know that, as mentioned earlier, Mark Williams did co-write this track. And although it's usually not specified in songwriting credits, I can assume that Mark wrote some of the music while Andrew probably wrote the lyrics. But I'm actually not sure. It could have been a collaborative effort on the lyrics for all I know. Some of the lyrics are easy to tie back to what Andrew's told us about this, what the song is actually about, his sister. Others, a little bit more difficult to assess. Again, we'll touch back to those lyrics in just a moment. Let's talk about the sound first. It's completely electronic, which honestly caught me a little off guard when I first heard it. Apparently that was the intention, though, from the beginning of this track. Truly, though, it only threw me off a little bit because for some reason, I was pretty open to it. Most times prior to this moment, when one of my favorite artists released music that was entirely different from what they'd done before, it was a little harder for me to appreciate. I think I may have mentioned Jewel here on the Synesthesia episode, but you'll have to go back and give it a listen and let me know. I can relate what Andrew did here with this album to the album that Jewel released 10 years earlier in 2003. Who else remembers this? One could argue that I was a pretty passionate Jewel fan, especially at the time, coming out of the 90s into the early 2000s. And although her musical evolution happened over time, starting with her debut acoustic folk album into a more modern pop rock sound a few years later, her 0304 album was straight up electropop. It aligned more with the other traditional female pop stars at the time, like Christina Aguilera, Shakira, and Beyonce. None of which I was into at all, though. So I had to really work at finding Jewel's voice in that new music, and to find the things that I liked about it in general. I remember thinking, is this a joke? Like, is she making fun of pop music? Or did someone put her up to this? Or does she genuinely feel connected to the style? But I eventually came around, and if you haven't given it a chance, if you're open to it, go back and listen to the very last song on Jules This Way, called The New Wild West. Then, listen to the first track on 0304 called Stand. There's nothing similar about those two songs, except for the vocals. But I think one would have a similar shock listening to the final track off of People and Things, then listening to Catching Cold on the Pop Underground. Regarding Jewel, though, looking back with a more mature and accepting brain, I can respect her decisions now for trying something new, and to her credit, she still stands by her decision back then to try something that no one else expected. And I still call myself a Jewel fan. Nowadays, I am a lot more open to that change in style that a lot of artists have done since then. In fact, some of my favorite pop-punk bands eventually released pop songs, did co-writes, and some even made country pop albums. If you're not sure who I'm referring to here, listen to Boys Like Girls' final album, and even Lit's latest album for that matter. Then you have some of my favorite pop-punk bands like Simple Plan, Good Charlotte, and Cobra Starship, who've made some straight-up pop music at times. Still, I've continued to follow all these bands along for the ride. That's what you do when you ride or die. By the time Andrew released the Pop Underground EP, I guess I was up for the change. Despite how different it was from all the previous music he'd written and released, somehow it still felt like Andrew. Again, I can respect an artist for wanting to try something different. Writing with other people to get a fresh perspective, working with a new producer to look for that fresh sound, 
And don't get me wrong, it did still take me a minute to figure out my opinion on the pop underground. But getting back to Catching Cold specifically, hearing that opening beat under Andrew's vocals really makes me think of the shift that Jewel took over a decade earlier. The introduction to this song sets the tone, and it really doesn't pull any punches about what to expect. Heavy bass, danceable beats, and some auto-tuned and filtered vocals. In the chorus, though, it's undeniably catchy. It's my favorite part of the song. If you work at it, you can probably imagine Andrew playing the song on just a piano, and after repeated listens, I honestly believe it could have been a Jack's Mannequin song with a full band, instead of all the electronic elements. I don't know if Catching Cold is the most electronic or the most pop song on the EP, but if not, I'd say it's pretty close. I hear less traditional instruments on this track than I do the others, that's for sure. What's interesting, though, is the sound, it's not straight-up pop music to me. It has a deeper layer to it, but I'm probably just biased. I hear the song different than a non-fan would if I put this on for him. To me, it feels like a serious songwriter writing a song, just only with access to unlimited synthesizers, filters, and massive production. And that probably, at least in part, has to do with the lyrics. Because to me, the lyrics aren't any less poetic here than all of his other work. So let's dive into them. First, I want to get one thing out in the open about the lyrics. I recently read a fan theory about this song that has to do with the Hunger Games series. I understand that with the timing between the film's release and the song's release, how that connection could easily be made. Almost exactly seven months after the song came out, the second Hunger Games movie in the series, titled Catching Fire, released in theaters. And there are some lyrics that some might mistake for Catching Fire references. I'll admit that I've even mistakenly thought of the title of the song as Catching Fire instead of Catching Cold, but I think it's because that movie was just so popular. But here's a question. Does Andrew ever sing the phrase catching fire in the entire song? I actually don't know. All the top lyric websites are about split in half on this. Half of them list the lyric as catching fire like you're catching cold, and the other half list catch a fire like you're catching cold. And the sites that list catch a fire also list catch on fire in the part right after the moonlight line, in which I would call the extended second chorus. It does sound like he's singing Catching Fire in most of the song, though, if you listen. But I'm not sure how to exactly verify what he's saying. And I'm not saying it's not a reference to Catching Fire from the Hunger Games series. I mean, the book was published four years prior to the song coming out, and it was very popular at the time. And I bet if you drew a Venn diagram of Andrew McMahon fans and Hunger Games fans, there'd probably be quite a bit of overlap. So I can imagine there's a lot of fans out there who wanted there to be a connection here, or maybe there was, or maybe there wasn't one. So earlier I told you that Andrew dedicated the song to his sister Katie. I'm not convinced the entire song's lyrics are only about that one thing, though. We don't really get any direct references to his sister until the second verse. In the second half of the second verse, he sings, Standing in the shadows underneath a family tree, I know your every move, baby girl, you gave the blood that saved me. Which is an obvious nod to his stem cell transplant made possible by his sister's donation. I think the most important line of the song is right there, though. You gave the blood that saved me. And that probably has a lot to do with knowing what he's referring to, but I'm not sure why he calls her baby girl. Katie is his older sister. It could just be a choice lyric or maybe have to do with his caring nature toward her, but she had to be approaching her mid-twenties by the time that happened. There are two more references about Katie. One's in the pre-chorus to the second verse. I'll never leave your side, now you'll always be a part of me. And then in the extended chorus I mentioned earlier, If the moonlight comes to steal your smile, call me up when your high's gone low. It will only take a little while, catch on fire like you're catching cold. I know his sister has struggled with some mental health issues in her past, according to some lines in Andrew's book. It's possible that some of the darker themes and lyrics could pertain to those experiences. But the lines I just read say to me that he'll always be there for his sister, during the good times and the bad. And he understands there's definitely going to be some bad times. But what I hear throughout other places in this song is also the theme of being very sick. I remember when I had pneumonia six years ago. It was the worst I've ever felt in my life by far. I don't wish that upon anyone. I was in bed for nearly 10 days, hardly moving, hardly eating. It was moment to moment going from shaking cold to feeling like like I was burning up on fire. So when I hear catch a fire like I'm catching cold, To me, that could be a reference to that feeling when you're so ill, going from that one extreme to another, and you can't control your body. You can only sit there and wait for the feelings to pass. Andrew did have pneumonia during his cancer treatment in 2006 before his stem cell transplant. 
So these lyrics could be a reflection of how he was feeling before his sister provided, as he puts it, the blood that saved him. I remember reading that it was a pretty serious case of pneumonia, and things could have taken a turn for much worse at times. Now there are other great lyrics in the song too. The whole first verse has some great ones, but they're much more mysterious and cryptic. And not knowing the context of the inspiration, they're hard to know whether they're directly related to his sister Katie, or the stem cell transplant, or about something else entirely. There are two references to rain between the first and second verse, but I assume those are metaphors for that time of his life, maybe? I do appreciate that the Pop Underground EP started with a song reflecting on his past, mentioning his brother, his mom, his dad, and his friends. The second song, Catching Cold, obviously references his sister. So it makes me wonder what we'll get on the next two tracks in the EP. So I'll just have to wait and find out. Now I mentioned the live version Andrew performed last summer on the Camp Wilderness live stream, and I do truly wish I could share the link with you. But I will say that you can still find it in the video vault if you're a member. But I bring this up because the piano-only version did show us what was underneath all those beats and synthesizers in this song. It's not that I don't appreciate all that on the original track, but when you peel away those layers, it's just another heartfelt song on piano about the gift his sister gave him. It was quite a treat. If you enjoy Andrew's piano work, I think this version really lets that shine, whereas the original version... Well, it's great for other reasons. So although not one of my favorite Andrew songs, it does have a great beat. It's singable, it's danceable, and it honestly helped prepare me for the more electronic songs that I would hear on Zombies on Broadway a few years later. I usually listen to this EP together as a whole, though, rather than the individual songs. I like that I can hear the songwriting that I've appreciated from Andrew over the years so much, but that it was also something entirely different at the same time. I think we all need to shake it up sometimes. Catching Cold isn't the song that I would introduce to someone that wanted to know what Andrew's music typically sounds like. It's also not a song I'd start with if I wanted to show them the, re the best of his work, but I think it's a great example of the diversity of his work. Thank you all again for listening. Be sure to subscribe and rate the podcast so more people can find it. And feel free to post a comment on one of our socials. I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you want to message me directly, email somethinginthewilderness at gmail.com. Keep on moving. Don't go running wild. 